When I look at the National Football League, obviously it's incredibly more complicated than other sports to play. Yeah. I'm not trying to say that a manager for Major League Baseball doesn't have responsibilities, a head coach for the NBA doesn't have responsibilities, but you can ultimately give them the ball and say, take me there. Sure. I can't swing the bat for you, Aaron Judge. You got to do sure. that. I can't shoot a J for you, Steph Curry. You got to do that. Yeah. But in football, it's so much more difficult. So in regards to that, I get it. But I still lean on what Nick Saban talked to me about because I've had the pleasure of having private conversations with Nick Saban. And he talked about leadership and being a leader of men. How important is that in today's NFL compared to what it was back in the day? In I, estimation? Yeah, so I'm not going to give up on the fact of leadership and being leader of men as one of the critical components to being a great player, quarterback, coach, okay. owner. We all need more leaders in this world. We all need more people that are, you know, worried about solutions than complaints. We need more leaders that are willing to step up and do more than do less, that are willing to push people to be more disciplined than less disciplined. We need more people to be team-focused than less self-focused. If we want to be successful in anything, it takes a team full of people. And a team full of people can't always be worried about what's in it for them all the time. Right. In all my experiences, in, in all my experiences in sports, whether it was high school sports, college sports, pro sports, the greatest team we had, you woke up every day and you went in there saying, what can I do to help the team win? not what can the team do for me to promote myself as an individual. And we played teams that were more interested in being Pro Bowl players than Super Bowl players. And to me, there was a big difference between being a star and being a champion. Mm -hmm. And champions do what it takes to win every single day, no matter what it is. There's no job that's too big or too small for a champion. Mm -hmm. So here's a question, and this begs the question. And, and listen, we have, we're here from that Express. We're having a good time. I'm not going to mention any names. But throughout history, there has been, dare I say, some prima donnas, some me, me, me kind of players that have shown up on football teams. We won't mention any names, okay? What would Tom Brady have done with a teammate like that? Well, that's a great question, and, and typically it is the receiver position where that comes from. <laughs> and can I explain why? Those poor guys, they stand out 23 yards right. from everyone else every right. single play. Right. And we break the huddle, and there's five linemen who are all in it together, and the tight end's part of the O-line, right. and the quarterback's back, part of that yep. group, and the running back's right behind us. And then those receivers got to run 23 yards away, and the only person they talk to all game is the corner. And that right. corner's talking smack the whole game to them. Right. And believe me, that corner's away from everybody else, too. So you got these two guys out there 25 yards from the center, and the only thing they do is talk to each other. Man, when are they going to throw you the ball? Well, I'm going to throw, throw me the ball on this play. Da, da. And they just go back and forth all game. So they get a little angry when the ball doesn't come their way. Right. So I think part of it is understanding that particular position in the NFL always has an inherent degree of selfishness. Because, look, they want, and I would say that's not always a negative, they want to help you win the game. Right. They want you, they want to contribute. They don't want to go through a losing game and then look at their stat sheet. And I was targeted two times. You have Tyreek Hill, you have Justin Jefferson, you have Jamar Chase. You don't want to lose a game and look over and see those guys were targeted once or twice in the game. You want to try to feed them the ball. And believe me, if I was a quarterback, I'd be wanting to feed them the ball too. Good defenses, they try to take them away. And I don't think the receivers always necessarily understand that. That's right. I try to tell them, you don't understand. When they have a certain defense called, they're sometimes putting one and a half players on you and sometimes two players. And at that case... I got to throw to somebody else that has a better matchup. Now, when you get a true one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to get you the ball, just like every other sport, just like basketball. If they got two on LeBron, there's one guy free. Right. And I think being a good quarterback is kind of being that point guard and seeing, okay, where is their extra coverage, and then where can I get the ball where it's the easiest opportunity for us to gain yards. And the opportunity, if they give LeBron a one-on-one, -on -one, then give him the ball. Right. And that's the point. That's how you play quarterback. You're out there a point guard. You're just dishing the ball to the people who can do something with it. The eloquence of that delivery is just phenomenal. That's why you're Tom Brady. But, but respectfully, it didn't answer my question. If you had a teammate, yeah, okay, that 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 was that kind of prima donna. Yeah. How I'll, I'll put it to you this way: I once interviewed Joe Montana, and I was bringing that very scenario up. 
Joe Montana said, I'd, low, I'd, I'd look at him and whisper in his ear, you want to see the ball for the next two weeks? Yeah. You better chill out. Yeah. I'm asking Tom Brady, what would Tom Brady do? So what Tom Brady would do, and I've tried, is I would try to connect with that player on a level that he can, he's really interested in and he can relate to. I, I want to find out about what's going on with him and his life and why he's feeling the way he's feeling and then try to rationalize things to a degree and say, hey, I understand what you're saying, but from my standpoint, this is how I see. So it's really about creating that connection through that relationship that you're trying to build with those particular receivers. The unfortunate thing about that is you're never going to get 100% of the way there. You could spend all your time and energy trying to connect with someone who's more self-focused, but in the end, that's their character and that's who they are. You may realize that maybe you could get 5% more out of them or 10%, but you may not get 20 or 30% more out of them. And I think that's anyone who's in here in a career, who's working, who's in charge of people and running a business, you find people that may be a little self-focused, you could put a lot of time and energy in them and that's important, because by doing that, you can actually minimize some of the distraction, but at the same time, you got to understand what the realistic expectations are for that as well. And then the opportunity, if they become too selfish, then at some point, they got to go play for the competition. And that's just the reality of sports. I think that's why it's very important to understand their emotional aspects to every athlete as well. We often evaluate athletes only on their physical ability. I watch the NFL drought. Oh, he's going to be a great player. Oh, watch him roll right and escape here. Watch him make this throw. He throws it hard. Watch him throw the downfield ball. And I'm sitting here going, okay, well, that's about one-third of what he needs to do to be successful. Right. What about the other two-thirds that nobody is thinking about? How does he deal with failure? How does he deal with success? Is he involved in game planning? Is he a good leader? Is he going to learn from year to year? Is he going to be better in the eighth game of year than he was in the first? How does he take care of himself? Does he have good habits off the field? What's his background like? Does he know how to deal with a degree of, of adversity? Right. So to me, that's such a small part of it. And I think we all have to understand that we're all emotional beings. And if you want to really actualize your true potential, you've got to become really in control of your emotions. The best players I had and the best teammates I ever had, they showed up to work every day. I never had to worry about their effort or their attitude. I knew that when I called a play, Wes Welker, he was going to run his ass off on every play, whether he got it right. or whether he didn't. The Go ahead, I'm sorry. And he was going to know what he had to do on every play. In every play, he was going to make the right decision. So when I was in a huddle with Wes Welker, I never thought for one second whether he was going to do the right thing or not. That is frees my mind up to do what I need to do because my job's not easy. Right. And if I got to worry about, oh, God, I look out and I see a receiver, I'm like, oh, God, he doesn't even look like he knows. He barely lined up right. right. He's looking over at the sideline. It looks like he's trying to tell, ask the coach, what do I got? What do? And I'm like, he's out. Right. I'm throwing the ball somewhere else. But so. would you? It's one thing to say he's out. You're going to throw the football to somebody else. Uh, were you the type of player that was an extension of the coach from the standpoint you'd go to the coach and be like, look, he don't have it. He, oh, yeah. He's not on his game. He didn't do. Uh, uh, some coaches see that for themselves. Some coach looked for the leaders to see that for them as well. Which kind of player were you? Well, no, I would just tell him directly, he's out. Put him out. I'm not, and, I, and I would tell the coach. <laughs> and I would tell the coach, don't put him in because I'm not throwing him the ball. Right. So you, you put him in, just that we're, we got 10 guys out there. So good believe me, as a quarterback, that's the best thing you got. You hold the ball. So, and I would tell receivers on certain routes, I had a lot of pet peeves as a quarterback. And certain things I said, for example, if I was running an outside breaking route, from the inside of the field to the outside field, and we went inside the defender, I told the receivers, I'm never throwing you the ball. So do it. I don't care whether you do it or not. If you do it, I'm never throwing. I'm just looking at someone else. So try to get outside, push them all the way up to your depth, and then break out. Right. Give me a chance. So that gets the point across pretty quickly if they realize that's the case for them.